people watching that are, want to compose their own music on on the banjo? Where would you? Uh-huh. you know, anything you would, you know, kind of overarching general general um, um, things that might help them. Yes, good question. Um, in general, I don't want to give answers that are disappointing. But I really think it has so much of who you are as a musician is really just what you like and what you listen to. The more, I mean, that's what what everybody says. In order to be a good jazz player, you have to listen to a lot of jazz. In order to be a good um, bluegrass player, you have to listen to a lot of bluegrass. In order to be a good writer, you have to read a lot. So I think I just sort of listen to so much non-bluegrass music and contemporary, I'm not even sure. A lot of the music that I like, I can't label. It's hard, but I like contemporary classical music, new classical music, solo piano compositions, movie, movie music. Um, I listened to so much of that, that when I would start playing banjo, I just began to be in search of these, of these sounds of these extended, um, more, this more extended harmony or or ways of thinking harmonically. Um, Like I said earlier, a little of, not so much of my composing has been applying theoretical aspects, um, at least for the style I've written and for Oates Codes. Um, I mean, now I've changed a little bit with school, but overall it was, I was just sort of following my ear. Um, I definitely think it helps to have sort of a, a funda- just a fundamental understanding of music theory, but I'm, I'm at the same time, you know, they're, if you have a good ear, if you're somebody who knows what you want to go after, then you're going to sound good. I think the reason I have found my voice very easily is because I know known for what I like and have always just tried to gravitate toward what I like, what, what I like. I've never tried to compose in a self-serving manner or not so much a self-serving. It's maybe not the best way to explain it, but I've just tried to compose for the way that makes that touches me. And I know it touches other people instead of being so, um, uh, cons- a little bit instead of being so conceptual, which is not necessarily a good thing. I'm generally less conceptual composer, more just like here's a mood, here's a vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, again, like I, I should probably also work on composing with with certain concepts. To a lot of art is about that. But anyway, um, without without going on without further tangent, what I can recommend is just um, if you if you like my style, if you like my style, then I would recommend piano music and piano composers like. Like Keith Jarrett, Chili Gonzalez, Ryuichi Sakamoto, Oliver Arnold's. Uh, uh, oh, guitar players, of course, have inspired me. Um, great player from Sicil- Sicily, Pepino D'Agostino. Um, he, I actually, I shouldn't go on too much attention about it, but I, I actually met him before I heard him. My my um, brother plays mandolin. We were at a camp taught by Mike Marshall in Katrina Lichtenberg um, in Benicia, California, and Pepino D'Agostino caught me leaving one day. He said, oh, do you want to want me leaving the building? I said, do you want to hear a composition? And I sat down and he played me his composition, Nine White Kites. And it changed the way I thought about composing permanently. I can tell you that Pepino D'Agostino's Nine White Kites has changed me that day as a person and as a composer. Um, so guitar players too. I, I always forget to mention guitar players, but specifically Pepino D'Agostino, who has a very kind of Italian and European approach, but also a contemporary classical approach. See, there's, there's really... There's only one of him. I don't really hear anybody else who sounds like him. Um, and then Leo Kotke, um, John Fahey, of course, too, and some of the early blues players like Mississippi John Hurt I've studied. Um, but yeah, predominantly piano players and guitar players, and mostly solo piano and guitar. 